Let's take a look at how we can bring audio files into After Effects. Now inside of your Work Files folder, I have snuck in a folder called Audio. And inside of that folder, we're going to be bringing in some audio files in just a moment. But before we do that, I'm going to hit the File, Import, and File to show you some of the formats that we can bring in. Now if you look in this list here, you'll see we have this AIFF file format. This is the common audio file format on a Macintosh platform. It stands for Audio Interchange File Format. We also have the ability to bring in MP3s as you see here, which is a very popular audio file format, especially for MP3 players, iPods, and so on. We also have the WAV file format, WAV, which is the popular and the default WAV or audio file uh, that you'll find on the Windows PC platform. But the files that I've provided for you are once again in the audio folder and they're both WAVs. So what we're going to do is bring both of these in. And when you click on one of these files here, you'll be able to see some information about it. As you can see, this is the name of one file that we'll be using in this section, Carpet Sounds. A little later on, we're going to be adding some of these sounds to footage that I have that has no sound. So carpetsounds.wave is, as you can see here, the duration. And we also have the quality as far as kilohertz. Now 44.100 kilohertz is pretty much CD quality. It's 16-bit and it's mono. We can also see a wave form here that shows us pretty much where the sound is silent and where it's loudest. We also have another file chair sounds and both of these were created in the traditional film style of making sound called Foley. Now if any of you guys ever watched any making of DVDs sometimes there are people called Foley artists who create the sound effects that add richness to the audio that really wasn't there when it was shot. For example someone might be on a cell phone and the Foley artist is adding the beeps and the sounds of button presses or there might be a dog in the background that really wasn't there but it gives a sense of that they're in the city or the suburbs so a Foley artist is pretty important so what I did was I simply took a fork and I scratched it against the carpet and I scratched it against the chair as well in the next part we're gonna have my cat uh, in a video where we're gonna add these to bring the footage to life Now what we're also gonna do is I'm gonna drag this right into my comp area right here and this will just add it to the timeline. I'm going to move this up so we can see what happens when we twirl open a sound file. I'll twirl this guy open and you can see we have an audio property. I'll twirl this open and we have our audio levels and as you can see these are the decibels here and I'll twirl this open and we can see that there's a waveform in here. So when I scrub to the timeline and I get further into the footage I can see the audio and I can zoom in with this guy down here or out so you click on the sound twirl it open and you'll be able to see a waveform where applicable so this is how we can bring audio in now when you're playing your footage and you don't want to hear the audio you can click right here on this little speaker and this speaker is going to turn the audio off or on in that particular channel so you can really uh, pay attention to the audio. Likewise, we can go to the window menu and we can open up the audio panel and when we play back our audio we're able to see whether the audio is playing too loudly. This green region is really good quality here without clipping or distorting the audio as it plays back through speakers. Once we get to an orange or red region there's a good chance you're going to hear some popping and hissing when you play back the audio. If you ever played audio from an iPod or some kind of device like that in your car and you played it really really loud you might have noticed a popping sound coming out of your speakers and that's an example of clipping. So you have to watch the audio play back and you can adjust it with these sliders here to kind of lower it so you don't get that clipping. Okay so now that we know how to bring the audio in let's go ahead and apply it to some footage.